Hey everyone, this is Fantabulosa, and welcome to the third update video for the Fantabulous game. As I'm sure you noticed by now, I'll be narrating this progress update because I just hate Windows Movie Maker's text tool, and there's a lot of info that I'm going to be throwing at you here. Now, the first thing you may be noticing is that I've changed the shaders of the game. Instead of the previous semi-reflective, realistic style, I've switched to a much more cartoony, cel-shaded style. I feel like these new shaders fit into the N64-esque, goofy feel of the game much more than the previous alternative, though they'll still likely be tweaked quite a bit, as currently they're just the default tune shaders that Unity provides. Moving on, I fiddled around with nav meshes and how exactly they work in Unity, and have created a rudimentary sphere friend AI that follows you around. As a test, I simply made a sphere friend constantly try to move towards you no matter where on the map you go. However, if he loses line of sight, he gives up until he sees you again. Not only is he able to navigate curves and bends very easily, but he's also able to jump up to predetermined ledges very smoothly and easily, as you can see here. If the player approaches a ledge that the sphere friend cannot reach, however, he hesitates for a moment before returning to his spawn point and triggering a lesser dialogue. This lesser dialogue speech bubble can say just about anything, space permitting, and plays noises along with letters in true rareware style. And before you ask, this is not the real dialogue system that'll be used in the game, but it's instead going to be used for, you know, various background conversations and other types of minor dialogue. Next up is a feature I intended to have in the last progress update, but failed to actually include. Terrain effects. Currently, I have three terrain effects in the game, but more can be added extremely easily as required. The first effect I want to show off is ice. As one would expect, ice causes Catboy's momentum to carry extremely strongly, virtually eliminating momentum unless he's moving in a direction opposite to his current momentum direction. This momentum also carries with jumping, so you can't, you know, constantly hop to override it. The next terrain effect I'll talk about is mud. Currently, mud's extremely basic and just halves Catboy's movement speed while he's standing in it, also causing him to slightly sink, as you can see here. Currently, you can pretty much ignore this speed reduction by jumping, but I plan to figure out a solution to this in the future, likely via also having jump height as well when you're in the mud. Finally, we have the fan-hated egg effect. In the old versions of the game, I had virtually no access to the camera effects such as, you know, warps and color correction, so I had to create the egg high effect solely through field of view manipulation. As we all know now, that was a very bad choice, and is personally my least favorite thing about Leif Antipo in this game. Now, however, I have access to a wide array of rendering tools, resulting in... well... this. Specifically, this is a twirl effect and a massive increase in both bloom and motion blur. Now, this effect is quite disorienting and is obviously very subject to change. However, it's also much closer to what I wanted to do with the original eggs. Furthermore, as a result of the smooth nature of the egg effect, I can also set it at various intensities. For example, getting hit by a certain attack could give you 50% strength egg vision, which would then wear off in about 2 seconds. On the topic of attacks, let's finish this progress update by talking about combat. Currently, I've programmed three attacks into the game, which I will demonstrate on these shamrock targets here. Firstly, we have a simple punch. This attack will be substantially stronger than the other options, but the player must be standing almost completely still to use it. The next attack is a dive roll, able to hurt multiple enemies at once, likely also causing a large amount of knockback when the time comes, and also going slightly faster than Catboy's normal run speed. If this becomes a problem, I may change it, but... In my opinion, one of the best things about the old N64 games was spamming its certain moves, certain attacks, to get mild speed boosts, so it'll likely remain like this unless there's some crazy sequence break that it causes. Lastly, we have a jump kick. Not only will this attack be able to hit, you know, flying or tall enemies or enemies on ledges, it'll also provide Catboy with a very sizable amount of extra jump height, allowing him to reach higher ledges or travel for longer distance horizontally. It can also be used multiple times in the air, but it has a cooldown of about one second in between uses, so you're never going to really notice that unless you're falling from a really high height. And again, I might just change it so you can only do it one time period. We'll have to see how the game plays. The last combat-related thing I want to demo is very basic, but upon holding down right mouse or LT or L2 on a controller, the camera zooms in and Catboy moves at a reduced speed. This is just the groundwork for the ranged weapon system, which I'll hopefully demo in the next video whenever I get around to making it. So, that's just about it for this progress update, everyone. Thanks for watching and staying up to date with the Fantabulous game. If you'd like to be sure to get all the latest TFG news and updates, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Tumblr dev blog by clicking the links you see on the screen or in the description below. And, of course, sharing the video with friends helps even more than you'd expect. So, if you know someone with a hankering for a weird, surrealish collectathon, send them over my way. See you all next time!